All right. Well, hey, everybody. This is the Judy Jam. It's April 22nd, 2019. Uh, we're here. We got some early birds here. We're going to um, go through uh, homework and see what topics come up and see what everybody needs information. I think we got Herman here, who's new. Excited to have you here, Herman. And, uh, and then we got uh, some... Our standards are here, and I'm sure more people uh, get here as we get closer to six. So um, Ed um, Babcock, Bab Babcock was talking about how to how to uh, you know how to how to find an audience um, for your speech because uh, you you want to speak on parenting, and there's there's only one way <laughs> to find an audience, and that is from someone you already know. Because if you're a starting speaker, chances are that nobody is going to, you know, hire you because, you know, they hire you because you've spoken before and now you have a video and people can see and then you can pitch yourself to people you don't know. But we have to start off with, who do we know? So I always start off with people. It's like, I was talking to a girl just the other day and uh, she know what her topic, she know anything. But she wanted to speak. She had done some stand-up comedy. She had done a little speaking, but she really wanted to speak. I said, well, who do you work for? She said, ah, I'm just an admin in a church. And I go, oh, what's your pastor's name? Okay, that's your pastor's name. Do they have ever speakers come? Oh, yeah, they have a lot of speakers come. All right, let's get a pitch to pitch to your pastor. So we figured out um, a pitch uh, to pitch your pastor. And we just did it, you know, like it's a one-minute pitch, which we're trying, that's what we're trying to put together and find that person. But I always like to find the person first, then do the pitch. So um, so we we pitched it, he loved it, and she's going to speak. Now she's gonna videotape that. So I always like to start with like, what synagogue do you, do you belong to? Who are the groups in the synagogue? Or what, what um, you know, church do you belong to? I mean, you can start, you can start there. What, what clubs do you belong to? What networking events do you belong to? Are you part of a meetup with people? Um, you know, so you have to start someplace. And here's the thing, it, it, you know, um, this industry really tests you because it's really entrepreneurial. You really got to create your own um, opening there. So Ed, when you did the exercise and the message of you on finding your audience, what did you come up with? Um, a, a lot of good things. Good. But um, I, guess, I guess I'm, you know, on, on the one hand, I'm, I'm trying to look at, I'm trying to, and, and probably doing a round peg at a square hole or vice versa, is that I'm, I guess I'm kind of looking at this, okay, if, if I'm going to make money as a speaker, I've got to somehow break into that corporate niche that may be an erroneous assumption on my part here's what i believe you know and i and i really uh believe this firmly you have to believe in your message and not give a a crap where how much money you make or what you do but i've got to tell this message i have something important to say i'm going to go out and say it now you know like when we people who do tedx's they don't get paid anything but they really want to get their message out. And somehow when you get your message out and you start getting your video and you put it on YouTube and you put it on the internet and you throw it around, stuff happens. You just got to get out of first gear because you can't say, this is the only thing I want to do because the corporate market might not be the right market for you, but you might find the market that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, the corporate market does, you, you can age out of the corporate market because the people who work in corporate America are under 60, you know, so they tend to hire people who speak to, you know, that age group. So, um, and certainly um, the corporate audience is not into, you know, parenting. So you have to find that audience. So I would say... You're going to get yourself, you're going to get your knickers and a knot ed by just going, well, this is what I want to do, but I don't know how to get into it. Now you're stuck. What if okay. you go, I really am passionate about this topic. I've written a book yeah. about it. I'm really into it. Where can, I, where can I speak it? Now, I'm going to make a list of people I know. Okay, you know, my friend Joe, he's a big deal in the church that's, you know, a couple miles yeah. away. 
I'm yeah. going to ask him if he knows a you know email of 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 someone who I can pitch this to, and I, you go you pick them up the phone you do an email you what you talk to them you know I really am passionate about it. this is why I believe it because it all starts with what you're passionate about, yeah. so it just doesn't happen like. Automatically, like for instance, I've been a speaker for a long time. I've made quite a lot of money from it, um, but I'm starting a new topic. I'm doing a TEDx talk on Friday. How much do I get paid for? It's zero. How excited am I about it? 100%. Because it's a new topic. I can't expect even my old clients to book me on a new topic because they've only hired me for comedy and being funny. And I'm doing a serious topic. So I have to do what you guys are doing. I've got to find a free gig and get a good video, that's that's all it's about, okay? So you need to next week come to me as, you know, I called these three people, call in some favors. You gotta network. You gotta find out what's going on in your community and speak. And it could be a group of, you know, I don't know, anything. Anything that's going on, but you got you can't just have, it can't be fictitious. Yeah. It, it has to be like a name you put into your phone and you call them and yeah. you pitch yourself. I never like to teach people on like, yeah, and you're going to get Corbin. It's like, no, you've got to start where you are and then you can edit snippets out and maybe that'll be applicable to your corporate speech if you want to do it. So anyway, okay. So yeah. Ed, you get into like, you know, not taking action it's it's i don't care what you talk what you do but pitch it to somebody this week you I know will. i really want to pitch. you know this is what i'm you know this is why i'm you know and you can pitch it just very simply i mean the template is there on how to you know pitch you know i really want to talk to parents on on you know who perhaps have had now you don't want to limit to people who've had bad childhoods or farther less you don't you know, there's a lot of issues in parenting. Kids are on drugs. You know, kids are doing things that make it very difficult to love them. I this, and I have developed five techniques on, on really how to improve blah, 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 blah. And I want to talk about it. I'm passionate about it. Okay? But it's yep. not about your story. It's really about, you know, what kind of thing. Matter of fact, this on my TEDx talk, I'm talking to high school kids. I've never talked to high school kids before. Is it, you know, is that a big pain audience? No. I really think I can make a difference in people's lives. And that's where we all have to come from. That's my entire life. I've always come from passion. What, what am I passionate about? And you know what? Everything else falls into place. It's been my experience. I've okay. always been good at making money. But, you know, when I have projects, they're just conceptual and I don't have emotion about it or no heart in it. And I don't go anywhere. All right, yep. Victoria. So, uh, Victoria, um, let me go through your stuff. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Yeah, I hope that helps. But, you know, oh, let's get out of like theoretical pitch. and call somebody and just pitch yep. and want to talk and just get up there and talk. And uh, I tell you, you're going to come back and I'm going to see you a new man, Ed. You're going to be so excited. I spoke at this group. It was fantastic. People came up and they hugged me. Oh my God. I collected cards from them and now someone wants me to speak this other thing. I'm moving, Judy. That's what I okay. want from you. Okay, Victoria. Um, I have your, your, um, I have something here from you. Um, let me see what it is. Okay, um, let me share it with people. It is, it is, um, where is it? Here it is. Okay. Okay. So here it is, Victoria. Um, what is this that you sent me today? Okay, the last time you told me to work on the core promise, the problem, your solution, and transcribe it from the video. That's oh, good. It. Shooting Jews in synagogue. Oh, okay, great. Okay, do So, you want to read it to us? Okay. Um, yeah. I'm here to tell you the story. That will Where be. are we? Where are we? Okay, we are. Is, at is this do I have the wrong thing here? 
Yeah, I sent you today, uh, yesterday. But, uh, Is this it? Oh, I don't know. It says core problem is the problem solution transcribed from the video, and then I start. Is this, is this, this is what you sent me. Any Anyone is aware of kids having parties? No, no, no. This is an old one. Oh, that's an old one. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so um, you sent me a new one? Yeah, I sent oh, you. Oh, okay, that's an old one. Okay, can you give me just one second? Um, uh, keto. Um, okay, just one, one second. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Um, okay. Something's wrong with my computer. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, let me come back to it because I'm, I'm going to have to find it when my computer... Okay, I, I can, uh, can... Do you want me to resend it? Yeah, why don't you send it? Resend it. That would be good. Send it to messageofyou at gmail.com. Okay, Herman, are you there? I'm here. All right. Um, so, hi, Herman. How are you? Now, are you new here? I am new, yes. Oh, keto. And where, where are you calling from? From Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Oh, from Iowa. Okay. And what, tell us a little bit what you want to accomplish and what your goals are and what you're doing. Are you doing comedy? Are you speaking? Tell me a little bit about what you're doing. You helped me about three years ago for my Toastmasters speech. Oh, yes. 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 What was it about? It was about a Grammy Award winner, violinist. Oh, yes. Oh, that was beautiful. Yes, I remember it. The blue violin who yes, got the, the blue MS, violin. MS and uh, yeah, you helped me and thanks thanks for that. And I so, want to yeah get back to Toastmasters and uh, also I think I have a couple of good messages to give people. And I thought this is a time to just polish my speaking skills. Okay, great. Now, have you been on 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 the um? on the uh, website the message of you and have you gone through any of the exercises? i've just started okay good well i just want to show you one thing um because unfortunately it's a little buried but it's like the most important thing and i just want to just go through and show you this and it's good to show everybody else as well and since we're not officially started here let me just show you this okay so um no that's not it okay hold on one second okay okay um let me try and get this share going um okay okay um here it goes so when you go to can you see that on your screen Yes, yes, I can. Okay, well, what you want to do is log in. Mm -hmm. And when you log in, um, um, it, it's module one, continue course. Okay, mm -hmm. the, the introduction to the message of you formula is really the one video you need to watch. So um, this is um, course introduction is really important. And if it doesn't show up for you, um, what we've done is we put it in every single place you go, which is, um, let's see here. Oh, wait, someone's making a lot of noise. Hold on one second. Um, I'm sorry. What was that? So it just, okay. Okay, miss the mob. Number one overview, watch it here. So you can see it from anywhere else, but you really want to do this one video. Oh, keto? So it's the overall video, and, and that's about 22 minutes. And then you don't really even need to watch any other videos. This is the video you need to watch, okay? So um, that's for finding your message. Because um, it ref if you're having trouble with any of the elements of finding your message, then you can go, well, I don't know what my bookable topic is, then you can go and see one of these other videos but i think it's the quickest way to um to do the course and then come here next week and read us the message of you statement 
Because if you don't have that, you have nothing. You really have to go, um, what is the message of you? What is your message? And um, what you'll find is that there is a um, um, something that you download on the site that you know just guides you to this one minute pitch. And do you have that? Have you worked on that? Do you have that? Not yet. All right. Well, just work. Just do that one thing, and it, you know, and it, and there's a template that you download with it, and that template is just very simple. And once you have that, you can um, you can you can pitch yourself to people. And I'll show you what that temp template looks like um, um, right over here. It goes. Um, okay, let me show you what the template looks like. One second. All right, share this with you. Okay, here's what it looks like, and it goes like this. You know how, you know how parents have this problem um, that their kids are so overly influenced by other kids um, that they keep so many secrets from you. There's so many different, um, I'm just making this up as we go. There, yeah. It's a problem parents have. There's so many different opinions about what to do. You could end up reading 20 books on being a parent and still have the problem, right? Well, I am a, and then you enter your professional experience. I'm a, um, I'm, I'm been a parent myself. I, um, I actually have written a book on it. I'm a professional therapist and I speak on, you know, five steps to parenting your kid. And, you know, this, as this is based on that, uh, my credentials, as well as what I learned from being, you know, not having a father and the results I'm going to give people is they're going to walk away with these five parenting tips, and I'm going to do this by interaction, by exercises, and by sharing my own story. That's it, that's all we want. We want to know what is your pitch, and your pitch has to fit into this formula to be effective, because this formula takes care of all concerns. You know, it, it addresses your audience, um, the challenges, your own credibility that you bring to this, your bookable topic, your personal experience, the results you give, and how you're going to get those results. So I hope that makes sense. And yeah. um, and then I hope you get somebody to go through this with, and then you can you can pitch it. Okay. Sure. Thanks. All right. So are do you want to like? Are you going to be working on a Toastmaster story? You're going to be working on something for the public. Right now, I'm working on a Toastmasters story, but after the, after the Toastmaster, I want to continue. I okay, great. I Did you want um, um, a punch up on that? Is is that what you want? Because then in module three, you can learn punch up and make it funny. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, so uh, we're gonna stay stay around because we're gonna break up into twos and see what's going on. All right. Um, let me just get. Before we go, um, um, Janice, and then I'm going to go back to Victoria because I have to find her thing. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Janice, you sent me a video, correct? Correct. And uh, are we going to watch it? Um, what kind of okay. do you want from, from this video? Okay, so there's two things. Number one, I didn't even place in this contest. What kind of contest I, is this? It was the Toastmasters. We were at the division level. So I won at the club and I won at the area. I did not win at the division, which is this next, the one step before the big district conference. I see. Okay. On the other hand, I realized that winning a speech contest in Toastmasters is not the same thing as communicating in a corporate audience. Well, right. here's the thing. No matter who you're talking to, you need to grab people uh, emotionally. Um, can I just see a little bit of it? Do you want us to watch a little bit of it? 
Yeah, you have it, unless you want me to bring it up. No, I have it. Okay. Yeah, you have it. Yeah. Okay. Let me, um, yeah. So, okay. I mean, you don't want to watch the whole thing. It's seven minutes. But the part that gets real emotional starts with the southern accent, which is Well, about... let me just see the beginning. Let me see the beginning, because the beginning okay. is the most important, because people will judge you right away. So let's... Okay. Here we... Okay. Tell me if you can hear this. Can you hear this? Uh, not yet. Okay, let me see if I can. Um, did, where, how did you mic this? Um, did you mic? No, oh, I didn't. Ah, no. Okay. Um, I think we need to talk about uh, a, a, a couple things about technical stuff. Let me just stop the yeah. share one second. Let me try sharing one more time. And let me try and optimize the sound. I have the. I have the. I have it here if you want to just do it. No, here's, here's one second. It was a typical East Coast bar mitzvah. For those of you who've never been to a bar mitzvah, it marks the time in a Jewish child's life when they turn 13 and become a responsible member of the community. And in typical East Coast fashion, the decorations were lavish. There were okay, okay. So, um, <laughs> it, okay. So, um, what's a? How could you? It. Why are, would people be interested in it? See, it, the beginning is so crucial, Janice, and and. And so how can you get people into your story? You're, you're starting, it, it was a typical Jewish bar mitzvah, and then you go to do the decorations, right? Why would people be interested? Well, I talked about the decorations because I thought you were supposed to set the scene. Are you telling a story? I'm about to, yeah. But don't uh, you have okay. to set the scene first? Um, no. If you're telling a story, there's, there's, you have to tease the story with something along the lines of what happens in this bar mitzvah. What's the crucial turning point? My mo uh, the real, the realization that my mother has made me crazy for so many years. Okay. How many people By, in that audience uh, know your mother? See, nobody knows my mother. Exactly. All right. So how let's let's work on this, everybody, because I think it's very valuable to work on. Um, uh, this is something where you have a um, what is it? A public humiliation between you and your mother? No, 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 no. That, that was like your mother making, you, making you crazy. No, no. It was my, no, it was my mother's own habit of always feeling rejected that I realized I had inherited. Okay. Because of something that happened at the bar. Well, let's stop. Okay. So I want somebody uh, uh, to volunteer to uh, work on this. All right. Because I think it's best if somebody else, rather than Janice, because she's close to the material. Um, can anybody relate to like you've inherited your parents' bad traits? Anybody relate to this? Okay, Annabelle. <laughs> so Annabelle, um, you, you can relate to this. Uh, so, uh, hey Annabelle, how you doing? Good, hi Judy. Nice to see you. So Annabelle, hi. what kind of question could you ask the audience that would get them into a story of, like this? Um. Have you all, ever have you often? What can you ask them? Yeah. Um, has your mother ever drove it, driven you crazy? Can you relate? Um, what else could you ask? Um, um, think about a time when your mother um, drove you crazy. I'd like to tell you something about my mother. All right. I mean, Okay. Okay. Good. Anybody getting getting there? Getting good. Good. Anybody else? I have want to try it. 
Who who is that? Sarah. Hey Sarah. Hi. I was thinking about you today. I hadn't seen you, and I went like, oh, is she okay? Is she gone? I know. I've been doing new things. I signed up for Jack Canfield Certified um, Success Principles Trainer Program, so I've been oh, you have? Oh, working okay. on that. Maybe so, you yeah, call me fun. before you do those things. But anyway, but continue. <laughs> on. It's really good. It's really good. I'm really okay. enjoying it. Oh, good. But anyway, okay. um, like the question you could say is, have you ever been doing something and you stop and you say, oh my God, I'm doing the exact same thing my mother did? Right. That kind of thing. Okay, great. What's good about the way she did that, Janice? What's good about the way she did that? Uh, well, she did grab you right away. The thing is, um, in the story, in the scene, my mother is criticizing two of the cousins because they didn't include her in the conversation. Yeah, but but this is not about this is the this is the problem that most people have. Okay, your your Janice, this is such a common mistake, and. Um, I see it in stand-up all the time. My mother does this, I do this, blah, 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 blah. But, but one thing that Sarah did that was so strong was she did an act out of who? Who did she do an act out of? Well, Sarah, what, what did you say? You said something like along the lines, have you ever, what did you do? You said, have you ever been doing something and you realize, oh my God, I'm doing the same exact thing my parents you know, my mother does. Or right. Something. Okay. Who, who, who is she acting out? Oh my God, I've done the exact same thing my parents done, you know, done. And it's not, isn't good. Mm -hmm. And I've hated her for it. Great. Now I hate myself. Who's the act out? Who's the act out? Who are we acting out? Myself. Hmm? Who are we acting out? Janice? Hello? She was acting out herself. No. Let, let's let, or, let me. Or, oh, she was acting. She was acting as if she was her mother. No. Mm -mm. Everybody and anybody who's ever been in that place. Okay. This is what a speaker has to do, and that's why I'm spending more time on it. Is because if you don't have a connection to your audience, it doesn't matter what you're doing ten minutes later. It's over. It's over. It's over when you say hello. What she's, who is she acting out? It's so crucial. Have you, any of you ever noticed that you've taken on the negative qualities of your parents? You go like, oh my God, I'm doing something just what my, my, my parents have done and I didn't like it when they did it. Why am I doing that? Who is she right. acting out? The audience. Yes. Yes. When you go, there I am at a bar mitzvah and da 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 da. And who gives? Nobody cares. You have to care about the audience. So, in the first thing you say, um, okay, I'll give you the opening to the TED talk I'm giving on, um, on um, Friday. And it's for high school kids. It's a TEDx for high school kids. Um, Frank King had me submit, and I did it because I need a new, uh, I'm talking about the power of purpose. And the first thing I say is, okay, people, I'm going to ask you a real shocking question. What if I was to tell you that right now you are living your purpose? Okay. And I look at the audience, hold my hands up. Some of you might be looking at me going, Judy, are you crazy? Have you seen my grades? I'm, I'm depressed. I fight with my parents all the time. And the only person who uh, you know, likes me on Instagram is my grandmother. I'm not living my purpose. Okay, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? What is it doing? open up a mental dialogue with the audience. I'm giving the audience voice. I'm connecting with them, right? So if you just go, me, my, I, at the beginning, I don't care. I don't care how interesting your story is. You're going to lose people. You have, to, you have to really speak to people, right? You have to ask, start with a rhetorical question. How often have you looked at all the things you've done and realized you know, all the negative qualities you're doing were the same things you didn't like one of your parents doing. 
you know? I realized this and it was in public and it was embarrassing. And now I'm interested in your story. There I am at a bar mitzvah. Now you can do your story, but pull people in with um, a teeth okay. of some sort. So in other words, start. You start, with the I'm talking about me and my mother. Right. No, we don't right. know your mother. Most of the audience isn't even Jewish. Doesn't give a shit right. about a bar mitzvah. Right. You know, I, you know, and, and, and nobody's met your mother. Now, if you go, let me tell you about when I met Cher, older people will be interested. <laughs> you know, even in my speech to the high school kids, I'm going to talk about Oprah. I'm going to go, I have to describe her because really not everybody, kids don't know who Oprah is. I mean, it's a, it's a different world in your audience. So you have to do something to connect. You can't assume. It's like a first date. You go to the door and someone goes, hi, let me tell you about myself. It's like, oh, boring. I can't wait till this date's over with. Yeah. Someone who asks you questions engages. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, the Jews, one day off. Today's the 20. Oh, whoops. Oh, well. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I got the date wrong here. <laughs> but it's cool. I made an effort, right? All right, so let's move on. Okay, so um, we got a lot of people here, and um, and I want to, to get some stuff. Okay, does anybody have any questions about opening up a speech or telling a story or how we start? Does anybody want to comment about that or anything? I have a quick question I wanted to... Yeah. To follow up something that Janice uh, asked about, because I'm also in Toastmasters, and I think that's like a good training ground as I'm getting my- Oh, it's wonderful, my, yeah. My, so we always want to connect to the audience. Like, is there a difference that we need to keep in mind between a Toastmaster speech and a keynote, or can we think of them as the same thing? Well, you know, I wrote an article about um, this guy, Mohammed, who won a couple years ago, you know, the number one Toastmaster. Um, and, and I, and I'll, sh I could send you the blog, um, uh, about what he did. That was so great. And I also wrote a whole blog for Toastmaster and I write for their magazine as well. And okay, you know, it was about, um, why women aren't winning that main contest, mm. you know? And the one reason why is that women seem to be more narcissistic in an odd sort of way. Yeah. Like I'm concerned about my body, my relation, my this. And there's not a reach out to the audience. And mm. I feel that reach out to the audience by starting with, have you ever, did you notice? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, let me ask you, I'm gonna say something shocking, ready? What if I say this? I'm going to say something really shocking. Are you ready? <laughs> audience going to, and I pause. Mm -hmm. Is the audience going to be interested? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, what is, you know, watch the news. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What happens when you weigh over 500 pounds? It could be a disaster coming next after the commercial break. Yeah, the teaser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you've got to do these teasers okay. um, to uh, get people into what you're talking about. Does that make sense? It does, but so, but what I think I'm hearing you say is I can kind of think of them in a similar way while I'm practicing on the Toastmaster. Yeah, stage. Toastmasters. You know, Patricia Fripp, who um, speaks a lot for you know Toastmaster, a lot of their their stuff. She yeah. and I absolutely agree on all of this. She 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 yes. actually went to a Toastmaster thing. Uh, I was speaking with her as well, and and she counted. How many times someone said, I, me, my? Yeah. And it's like, it's a disaster. You have to go, us, we. What we. is your message? Inclusive. Now, when you tell a personal story, that yeah. story starts with a message. So, like, I'm going to tell a story that I tell a lot in this thing Friday about um, speaking for a, a, a kid who became a quadriplegic. And I'm um. going, you know, Boy, sometimes, you know what a purpose really is? It's a gift that we give to others. And I learned this from a very unexpected place. Mm -hmm. You know? And, okay. you know, in something that changed my life forever. 
there I am volunteering. Now I can go, there I am volunteering to speak at the VA hospital. Right. Okay. Okay. But yeah, that's bam, so helpful. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's, it's like a topic sentence. It's, it's, it's classic, you know. Okay. Uh, Patricia Fripp suggests, like, how often have you thought blah, 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 blah? Oh, right? Okay. Well, you know, have you ever or how often have you? Right. Love How it. Many times. Okay. You know, isn't there a point in your life where you just go, I'm sick and tired of my life. I want to change it. Mm -hmm. Well, here's something you can do that would change your life forever. Mm -hmm. There I was at the blah, yeah. blah. Now you can do it. Or, but wow. I, I, I think when you tell a story, you got, there I am. So when you tell a story, whether it's in Toastmasters or whether it's, yeah. you know, corporate, wherever it is. Okay. You know? Yeah. Great. Thank Does that you. help? Yes, hey. so much. Yes. Monica, so good to meet you. How are you? Good. Great. Doing well. What are you working on? I'm working on doing some online products um, that are primarily on test anxiety. So kind of, kind of uh, narrow niche at the moment. Uh, and I have a speech that I do called Confident in the Spotlight. How does your speech start? It starts off with what my commitment is. Go ahead. Uh, and, and I basically say, uh, there are two reasons that I, I'm here. My commitment is, is for you to be able to reach potential. And here is where that comes from. It comes from this experience with my father in the Philippines, and it comes from your death experience. So okay. I basically start Let me ask you something. Could, yes. you, um, could you start that with the problem? So you're talking about confidence, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's it's basically um, this is primarily for people who have to get up on stage or present at meetings or get on phone calls, do conference calls. A lot of them, the people in my groups are kind of younger women. English is a second language, IT tech, and they're told to sit down, shut okay. up, don't contribute, and so they're brilliant, but they they don't know how to be quote confident in the spotlight. They All right, so. You know what we're going to do right now? And then I'm going to look for Victoria's email that she sent me on her pro project. But this is what I'd like to give you all an assignment. Okay. Um, and the assignment is, and I want to write it out uh, to everybody. The assignment is I'm going to put in the chat, um, create two questions to ask the audience um, um, about the challenge that your uh, speech is um, addressing. Okay? All right? And um, don't include I, me, or my. All right? And um, I think that's it. And have it be, uh, um, ask it as a rhetorical question. All right. All right. And the question needs the audience says, oops, the audience, the audience response to be, you know, yes. All right. So you can't go, how many of you, you know, found it hard being raised in an orphanage? <laughs> Maybe one person in the back, right? You know what I mean? You can't have like, you have to have a door. So what I'd like to do is to break you up into groups and, and let's work on this because I think it could be very powerful for you to really have the opening of your speech. And no matter what your speech is, let's just say, even if you go, I know, Judy, this is my speech. I've written it. Um, um, I'd like you also to have, if you could have an act out in it, act out of what the uh, audience is thinking. What is an act out? An act out is where you voice the audience's concern. So I go, oh, all right, everybody's living your purpose. And then I go, I know some of you are thinking, Judy, 
I'm not living my purpose. I'm depressed. I'm miserable. You know, I have no followers. And then I address that. So that's, so let's just see if you can help each other and let's just play with it for 10 minutes. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll listen and I'll find some more of the homework that you guys did. And um, John Morris, by the way, I didn't get your MP3 file. The only way to send a video to me is through YouTube. Maybe you can throw it on YouTube now. I'll have to get my 20 year old to show me how to do that and then I'll show, send it to you. <laughs> oh, you just, you just drag and drop it in YouTube. All right, get your, get, Find find a millennial. All right, so let me just uh, send this to you. I'm just going to, uh, let's see, uh, uh, set this up. All right, and we can just go around and I'm gonna uh, just create these breakout rooms. Um, uh, let's just go, wait one second, one second, add a room. And uh, one, one, give me one second, move to, move to six and right and move to okay great all right here we go i'll be back i'll, I'll send you things when we're, we're ready all right so talk to each other and find out what is your opening and we'll come back and talk about that the jack canfield success principles thing no comment okay <laughs> no i think jack canfield is a really wonderful marketer he really is. Matter of fact, one of my cous uh, cousins works with him. Yes. Yeah, but I, I'll be interested, maybe not right now, but we can have a conversation about it. I'd, I'd be interested to hear what you're learning. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, Sarah, you're here. So how, how, what's, what's the way you could start your talk? Um, I was thinking something like, have you ever thought, things were going well in your life, and then suddenly you found yourself back in some childhood memory, just when you were doing some normal everyday task. Something like that. So something along those lines where... Okay, well, let's, let's, let's put it out to the group. Okay, and so this is what we're going to do. Fun. And let's just be honest here. Um, if something immediately gives a very specific memory to you in your head, I want you to put your hands up. All right, so we're going to go around and we're going to keep trying different things and see how many hands we can go up. Like, okay, does that make sense? Everybody, do you, does everybody see the hands up sign? Uh, there's a hands up sign. Is there, do you, can you see it? No. No. Uh, oh, yeah, you have to, um, from our view, you have to, at the bottom of your screen, click on participants. There's 13 of us. And that'll yeah. open a new window, and if you, at the bottom of that window, there's a little bar that says raise hand. Got it. Where, Where is that? that? I don't see it. I don't, um, see, I don't see the raise I hand. All right, you know what? We're just going to raise our hand. I see it. Okay. Just do it this way. Yeah. Huh. We'll just raise our hand. Okay. Uh, wait, let, me, let me get everybody here. All right. So, uh, can you all see everybody right now? I see uh, most people. Okay, great. Hey, Jeff. I didn't see you. Nice to see you. All right, so so let's just start. Sarah's going to get the ball rolling, and go ahead, Sarah. Oh, okay. Have you ever thought your life was going really well, and then suddenly, boom, something happens, and you are just back into childhood memory, and you wonder what in the world is going on? Your life just kind of falls apart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four. Yeah, we need to get everybody. So let's try it. Let's try. I think, you know what? My childhood memories, um, I, I'm at a speech. I'm at a public place. Uh, life falling apart, childhood memories don't exactly um, come to mind people really quickly. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? What could be more accessible that you can say? Hmm. I guess the thought that comes to my head is, um, have you ever been talking to somebody and they said something to you and you completely overreacted and you wondered where in the world did that come from? <laughs> right. Okay. Anybody? That's me. Maybe. Okay. John, you've never overreacted to somebody? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. He does look really mellow. 
<laughs> you always look really mellow. Right. It's like, where did that come from? Oh, that's great. So you see how you can slowly get, you don't want to throw everything out of the very beginning. All right, Herman, you got an opening? Yes, I said, do you, do you have a desire for your heart to feel more joyful, more grateful, more often? Yeah. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> Say it in English. Do you have a desire for your heart to feel more joyful, more grateful, more often? All right. Um, I, I, I never think I want to be my heart to be, I don't think, start with a problem. Start with the opposite. You always start with the problem. So do what, what's the opposite of that? What, when depressed. someone's not feeling joyful, what are they feeling? Sad or depressed. De okay, let's start with depressed. Okay, what could you ask people? Have you ever been depressed and you want, you have a desire for your heart to feel? No, forget, joyful? forget, forget what you've already written. Start with okay. the depressed. Don't go to and joyful. And, no, don't go to that. Go ahead. Have you ever been depressed? Go ahead. Have you ever been depressed? and wanted to do nothing. Anybody? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you see how you'll get more, I haven't been depressed and gone, oh God, but I do an act out. I don't feel like doing any, I wanna do something, make myself be, feel better, but I don't know what it is. So that's an act out. Why don't you try that, Herman? Try, try it like, just like I said that. Have you ever been depressed and thought, and just, you know, do an act out, go ahead. Have you ever been depressed and, oh, gee, I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit in a corner. Yeah, okay, good, 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 good. All right. Did you feel that? Did you feel eat a gallon of ice cream. Yeah, I just want to sit. I don't want to do it. I want to feel bad. I don't even know what to do. I just, uh, I wish it was, I just want to go to sleep. I don't want to do anything. I just want to eat. Yeah, yeah. I just want to eat. I just want to get high. I just want to drink. I just want to, you know, make the list. Okay, uh, good. Well done, my friend. Um, Ed, Ed, go ahead. If you got something, how would you start? Are you talking to Ed Babcock? Or Ed, Ed Babcock. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm still working on this one, but uh, have you ever wanted to be a great parent only to realize that your kids are the problem? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought... You, not wanted, but have you ever thought thought just and do do it the whole thing as an act? Have you ever thought? Go ahead. Have you ever thought about being a great parent? No, no. Have you ever thought? My God, I'd be a great parent if I just didn't have these awful kids. If I could I like just, if I could just try this, <laughs> try it like that. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> say, try it. Say it again. Um, have you ever thought? Have you ever thought? I'd be a great parent if I didn't have these imperfect kids. Right, good. I wouldn't use the word imperfect because nobody okay. uses that word. It's a very literary word. If I just okay. didn't have these kids. Right? Uh -huh. yeah. right, very funny. Now I write that down. You have the opening to your act. David, hi, David. Hello. I haven't seen you in a while. Go ahead. Do certain songs come on the radio and make you want to cry because you thought of your old girlfriend? Oh, yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Okay, good one. Okay. Um, John? Oh, keep, go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> Have you ever rejected advice from your partner and then realized, oh my God, he was right? <laughs> Have you ever rejected advice from your partner? Yeah. Yes, good. <laughs> All right. What does that have to do with planes? <clears throat> the... Um, Biggest air disaster, 587 people. The, co the pilot took off when he didn't have clearance and he rejected the, his co-pilot telling him he didn't have a clearance. <laughs> okay, good. My, I would even love to, that's, the, that's, that's, <laughs> that's really good. That's really good. I love that like from a personal to then like science and stuff, very good. Okay, Victoria. Have you ever wondered why would anyone think of viciously attack each other solely based on religion, skin, color, or sexuality? 
Okay, it's a kind of a little heady. Um, I'm going to come yeah. back to you because I have an idea for you. Okay, okay. Um, it's just you know I it's because you're talking about the Holocaust. You know, I'm like, talking about the racism. Well, yeah, we'll do it from some, you know, say anybody, you know, watching the news. I mean, everything's so divided right now. Come in, come in with something current, like right now. Try, try it again. Try it again, Victoria. Okay. So right now it is try attack it on the Sri Lanka uh, churches. No, you don't want to be that specific. Oh, anybody okay. watching the news and going, this is, there's just too much hate in the world. Uh-huh. Anybody's watching the news. Yeah. Oh, careful. There's a man in your house. He's about to attack you. He's right behind you. He's coming. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Monica. Monica, huh? Monica, go ahead. Have you ever been I will give it to you later. Thank wait, you. Wait. I should still be. Wait, start, start again. Over. Start again, Monica. Okay. Have you ever been sitting at a meeting and thinking, I should still be running the show, but the thought of speaking up freaks you out? <laughs> Anybody raise your hand. I thought of that. No, everybody, <laughs> like, um, I should be, if only I ran this, it would go smoothly, but uh, I'm too scared to raise my, to volunteer. I love that. That's really good. Okay, Karen, what do you have? Okay. Um, have you ever rejected a hunch and then found out later the hunch was completely right? <laughs> oh, God. Anybody? Really good. These are, you guys are getting it. <laughs> you would be, you would be live sitting pretty if you just followed that. All right. Yes. Okay. Victoria. I mean, Annabelle. Go ahead. Okay. Annabelle. okay. Have you ever been sitting in a meeting struggling to formulate a question? Where do I put the verb? I want to say, I am wanting to say, I wanted to say. Guess what? That really doesn't matter. Uh, who is this to? Who's your audience? Oh, oh, um, ESL, EFL, learner, um, second language English learners. And, and what's their big fret? What are they fretting about? Speaking up in a meeting. So it's, uh -oh. it's similar. Right again. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, 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 got it. Good, good. And they'll really relate to that's what their concern is, okay? Oh, I... I think I didn't think this exercise would be this successful. You're all doing so great, Ed. Okay. There. Um, I have to slap my hand because I wasn't really going on that. Um, we talked about a speech that I'm giving this Saturday at a birthday party that I was just asked to give two days yesterday, actually. And here's my opening. How many of you here know that the Green Berets were conceived from a group that was actually formed during the Civil War by a Confederate general? This is for a Green Beret with all sorts of decorations and handicap, disabled vet, celebrating his 70th birthday. And well, it's a lot of information in there, and especially the birthday party where I'm sure a lot of people are going to be drunk. So um, why don't you just make it really simple? How many of you feel that Green Berets are heroes? Or let's have a hand, everybody. Okay. You know, for the, you know if, it's, if it's like that kind of thing, you know, I mean, but all that information is kind of like, nah, what do you say? You know, you, when you open, you want to ask, you know, um, uh, you know, at a birthday party where people are drinking and won't have necessarily the attention, get people to applaud. Come on. How many of you believe the Green Heroes are, uh, Green Berets are true heroes? Okay. So can we have a hand for one of them sitting right over there? Okay, bam. So now you put, people put their phones down, their drinks down, and they applaud. Uh, that's a good thing. Did you write that down? Write that down. Okay. All right, good. Jeff. Okay, so um, Judy, I changed mine based on the feedback you, you've given some other people. So I think it's a little bit better. So um, have you ever thought I'd be a great manager if I didn't have these horrible employees? <laughs> that, everybody, right? Anybody feels that? <laughs> If anybody think 
that if if they would just read a book on fellowship, that, that they would, you know, read a book on, there should, should be a book on how to do what your boss tells you to do. Why isn't there that, you know? Like that. <laughs> right? Yeah. Write that all down. That's excellent. Thank you. you haven't had that before. That's a really killer opening. Okay. I like it. Thank Super you. Super killer. Now, Janice, who inspired all of this. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. And I think it needs tweaking, but I think I'm almost there. Have you ever felt overly hurt because of something someone said to you? Yeah. Okay. It's a little. Or because, or because someone criticized you. Uh, yeah, when someone criticizes you, have you ever thought, try it that way, and then do an have ACTA? You, have, well, really what it should be is, have you ever overreacted when someone criticizes you? But do you? the overreaction. When someone criticizes you, have you ever oh, thought... Oh, oh, okay. Oh, got it. Okay. Try it. Okay. Try it. When, when, someone criticize, criticize, when someone criticizes you, have you ever thought. gone... that? Have you ever thought... That stupid bitch. <laughs> Who the hell does she think she is? She doesn't know anything about me, and she should try to do my job. If she wants to do it, if she thinks she can do it better, she should get up here and do the job herself. Yay! Amen! Amen, Amen sister! <laughs> you can't use the word bitch in a corporate oh setting, God. but, oh my God, that is... Can you, can what? you say... Can you say B word? Why? It's like that woman no. is a total. Yeah. A total, okay. I, you got to find another word to say. A total witch. A total witch. I mean, uh, get a creative word. You can come look on the internet for all okay. sorts of ways to get around that. <laughs> you know, creative. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, That's uh -huh. helpful. Right? Yeah. And then you go, well, she's right, but still. Yeah. All right, Janice, really, really dynamic, really good. So um, let's see. Oh, well, um, I wanted to uh, just, Victoria did send me some homework. If you guys send me homework, we can be all over this. Um, so let me just show you this, this um, thing. We can, uh, now that you know, this is what you sent me. Can you see this? I'm here. Uh, Victoria, do you want to read it? Victoria, are you there? Okay. Oh, wait. There you go. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I'm here to tell you the story that will inspire you to share. It's the story about my mother surviving during World War II Holocaust. My mission is to tell her story to make sure no one will forget and the history will not repeat itself. There is no place for hate, racism, and anti-Semitism in our lives. Life is too short and too beautiful to waste it on hate. I will tell you how, in spite of the horror and PTSD, my mother was able to make beautiful life for herself and still is. I started the blog and young people all over the world wrote to me, here are some blogs. Oh, well, I'm not going to use the in my speech, of course. Oh, but, oh I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, so we have, we start the with the, okay. So how, what's a better way to start this? Oh, it, uh, okay. It's, so what's here? What's the problem? I don't see the problem uh, here. Does anybody watching news lately? Okay, yes, but okay. Who, oh, Karen, you had an idea? What? I can't hear you. Karen, what? Did you have an idea? No, I'm just listening. Listening. <laughs> Anybody have an idea? Come on, we just did this. We just did this exercise. Um, how many of you um, are afraid? Of, well, it sounds so, let's see. Some of you um, afraid to, 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 to. Now let's just, now her audience is going to be like the uh, a Jewish group. All right, so we have a Jewish group in front of us. What do, what do you want to open with? Victoria, what do you want to open with? Yeah, I'm, I'm open. I can open. Uh, does anybody feel like anti-Semitism is rising lately? Oh, good. 
feel that anti Sam No, do any of you feel? Any, the, you know, okay. Uh, do any of, of you feel that anti Sam is on the rise? Okay, right, good. I wrote a couple things, I don't think good, but but um, I kind of put uh, here, how many of you are feeling that the world is full of too much hate? Hey, for immigrants, racism, especially religious tolerance. How many of you turn you turn off the news because it's become too disturbing? Mm. It's no longer a question if history appeal itself, as now we see that history, that we see as, uh, as as we see that history is, is repeating itself, dot, dot, now, okay? What's that, who's the guy who said, I can't remember, you, um, anyway, said, you know, blah, 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 never forget. So you can put a quote at the beginning here. That's why I'm here today, okay? I'm committed to telling my mother's story about how she survived World War II Holocaust. My mission is to tell her to make sure no one will forget and history will not at read, please. So, because there's no place for hate, racism, anti Semitism in life. Life is too short and beautiful to waste it on hate. Yeah. Well, it's not that life is, too, that's kind of a um, bumper sticker or something. I mean, you know, we're <laughs> to, to waste on murdering six million people. I mean, so, so now this connects you. So, if you look here, you see how many you go with the word I, um, yeah. about mm -hmm. my, my mission, tell her story, we don't know who she is, but, but it's not about the audience. The, the people who are sacrificing their time, giving you the time, make it about them. How many of you feel hate for it? Yeah. How many of you turn, because they come to someone, if this is a will, da, 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 I'm committing to, that you know now you can go to it okay so set up this is set up this is what is the problem so um i'll just um do you want to screenshot that do you know how to I, I yeah i i did yeah okay so uh you can screenshot that okie doke all righty thank so, you any questions anybody um anybody has to uh you know, Frank King has been coaching a lot of people. I, I know I sent you guys a link and you get, you know, a big discount with him. He's extremely helpful. And I know Lynette scored one. I scored one, um, a, a TED Talk, because I, I really believe that the mo one of the most important things is getting video on yourself, good video. And, the, and, and video on yourself means, um, you know, getting a lavalier mic and hooking it up um, because otherwise, if you use the mic and the camera, you're going to get like the people around the camera in the back of the room going, what time is this over? I'm thirsty. Where do you want to go for lunch? It's just like you work so hard. You finally do a speech and then you get You want to have it like right hooked here and you want to get a shot that is like a medium shot of you because you know, there you are doing your thing. And even if like some of it doesn't work, you can always find two minutes of it and put on social media, put on your site. But it, you know, like Janice was so hard to hear yours, you can't use it. So um, let me show you the one I bought. It's really cheap, but it worked really well because I have an expensive one and I don't use it. It doesn't work as well. Hold on one second. Let me find it. Um, oh, darn it. Someone cleaned up my office. I just had it on the floor. I bet someone cleaned up my office. So I can't find it. I just got an Amazon. You know, I'm not kidding. You can get for like $500 a, you know, H, uh, uh, a camera, HD camera. And that has a shoe that you can, you know, put the uh, wireless mic thing receiver on. 
The mic is like a hundred bucks. You can get a camera for $200 off eBay. I used one even. And, um, and a tripod. And that's all you need. And then you can have a, you know, because you're going to need video. All right. Video of you speaking. So anyway, any other, any questions? Go ahead. So Judy, um, thank you for helping with the introduction. What's going to be my next step? Your next step, well, your, 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 the, the step should really be, like, I like what I wrote for you at the beginning, because the problem, again, yeah. every speech starts with the problem. Every speaker is booked because there is a problem. It's like, oh, geez, we've changed the pay structure. Everybody's bitching about it. Let's get a speaker to talk on accepting change you know so every every speaker is booked because you know ugh, i was what did i do a pico insurance company um, this, um someone was fired for inappropriate joking and then everybody stopped joking and the workplace became really horrible let's get someone to speak on appropriate joking bring in Jim <laughs> Carter. so every every time there's a problem like um you know Speakers are brought, we're having a problem. A lot of people are dealing with mental health issues. Let's get Frank King to talk about, you know, suicide prevention. There's always a, a problem, and that's why people are brought in to speak. A problem in the world, a problem in the company, a problem in a certain group. Um, you know, uh, certainly sexual harassment speakers are in huge demand because of the Me Too campaign. People don't know what is appropriate. Joe Biden doesn't know what's appropriate. Nobody knows what, like, what is appropriate now? Um, so they'll get a speaker in. So everything is surrounding um, the problem that people face. And if it's a problem that um, is really getting a lot of buzz right now, you'll get more work. Um, and, and you'll get, you can hook it up to a hashtag, uh, whatever you talk on, and that again becomes more powerful so um you know you gotta you gotta hook yourself to some organization someone something to you just can't be all by yourself disconnected from the world going what am i going to speak on you have to be involved in it living it does that make sense yeah, so um, did you glance in, at the rest of the speech? Do you think it's ready? Well, your, your next step is, uh, next time you come on, um, um, Sarah will pretend she's um, the buyer. She's president of the, of, of the um, of Prescott, Arizona, B'nai Brith. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to do your one minute pitch. Hi, I like to speak uh, to your group because I and, and do your pitch because you've got to get the gig. I get the gig before you write your speech. Or I work with Frank King and get a TEDx talk on your talk about how not to let history repeat itself. It's, you know, if you have some ideas on how to do that. So the, the important thing is to get your pitch. I, I, you know, a lot of people want to hire me to write their speech and I no longer do that. I only do it if people have a gig. Because why, okay. you know, so, why do that, right? So, yeah, so another thing you told me last time to give, tell people what to do about it because they feel powerless. Well, that's part threat. of yeah. your pitch. These yeah. are the results I'm going to show people. I'm going to show people that volunteerism really helps defeat anti-Semitism. I'm going to show them that sharing stories or passing my story around, you know, to how to speak out. I don't know what it is, you know, you, and, and certainly you could just in your speech, because you're mostly, it's a story that you want to tell. You could have one action step that people yeah. yeah, so my action step I came up uh, is to pay it forward, tell stories, to share stories. Play it up forward. Okay, that's excellent. That's really good, Victoria. But I want to hear what you're going to say on the phone next week, uh, next time we do this, okay? One, one minute film? Of no, not, not, oh. not, not a film. Let's oh. practice just doing it here. Anybody want to practice their um, one minute pitch right now? Anyone? Karen? Janice? Jeff? No, not a pitch. I do have a question. 
Go ahead. So, Judy, each time you gave feedback uh, to people's uh, opening questions, um, they all got better. I'm trying to make the connection. So one of the things I noticed is they, 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 they went from being really heavy or wordy to becoming very light uh, and clearer. I know what, I know, how would you describe the biggest difference between what you heard most of us say and then how you helped us to improve it? So we could, you know, ah, good question. Say, yeah. Takes at least two people. <laughs> All right, yeah. the creative process. Okay, so I had to write a speech, a new speech for Friday. And I, you know, had a week. And my first draft was really crappy, really bad. So I um, got together with the, my team, the people I get together, my coaches, and did it. I did another draft, um, got together again, showed it to another couple people. And then I did a humor pass on it and punched it up. So this is, this is, this is, this is what it means. This is the comedy process. So... Um, I think that's a great question to end in with because the answer to it is getting together with somebody else and being engaged in the creative process and know and accept it's going to be a mess before it's a success and just be in that, be in that mess and go, it's here somewhere. I don't know where. Oh, I have an idea. Let me try that. That doesn't work. Let me try this, but never give up. And the people here don't give up. I love seeing you each week doing it. But, you know, I keep reminding myself, it's such a difficult process. I, I, I get myself really, you know, knickers in a knot when doing a speech. But I get together with people. I can't do it alone. Neither should you. So I'm going to leave. And what's going to happen is um, you're going to get together, make a date, put your emails, you know, into the chat. You can talk um, yeah, among yourselves. And uh, you did really great work. You just need a little coaching, but do you know the real way to learn how to do this is by helping someone else. All right, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. All right, uh, get together with somebody, definitely before the next one, and just work on one aspect. Just try giving your pitch would be so great in two weeks if we all practice our pitches. You know, get them down to less than two minutes, and that would be awesome.